In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector 365, we'd like to show you how to use motion tracking. For users of 365, CyberLink just changed completely how it works. And so we're going to take you through all the changes so that you can do effective motion tracking in your projects. You can motion track four different kinds of elements now. Titles, videos, overlays, and images. So let's show you a little bit about motion tracking in PowerDirector 365. Let's take, for example, an image. I'll take the image of this gentleman, and we're going to put this on any higher number track. And I can control when the image appears and disappears on the screen by changing the duration. We're going to make it a lot smaller and put it over here. And we'll go to the beginning of where we have it. And let's attract the, the motion to this inflatable. To do that, you simply put it on the screen and change the location and the size to be what you want. And then with it highlighted, you click on the edit button above the timeline. And then the panel on the left, you're going to see a new option called tracking. Now this tells you how to do that. I'm sure after you've done this once or twice, you'll say, don't show again. I'll just click on OK here. Now, when you're tracking, you have several things you have to consider. What are you going to track? And that's what the yellow box is all about. So I'm going to take the yellow box and I'll change the size and shape to something that's pretty cohesive here, the red of this element. And that's what I'll track and he will be this distance from it approximately as we track it. Now, if the inflatable goes away from the camera and becomes smaller, and I want the image to be smaller as well, I turn on the adjust size with tracked object. Likewise, if it gets closer to the camera, the image would enlarge. I don't need to do that for the example, but that's what this is. So I'm gonna click on the track button in the lower right corner of the left panel. When I do that, there's going to be a screen that pops up that gives me a progress on my tracking. And so it will go through that amount of time on my clip and it will set keyframes. In this case, it will be position keyframes that tie in the image to the box where the inflatable is. Now it's finished. I'm going to turn off my control panel on the left side and we'll will play by hitting the space bar and we see that as the inflatable moves the image should follow along pretty much it will stay the same size regardless of the size of the inflatable but it will follow along now if I wanted to do a video I could put a video on the screen and it would follow the same process I simply drag the video down put it wherever I want Let's change the size of it, make it pretty small. Put it up here, decide what I want to track. Let's put it on this guy again. And then I simply would click on track and then the video would follow above it. We won't do that, that's rather silly in this case. We're going to look at the overlays, which are really fun to track. Let's click on the overlay room. And then I'm going to do a search. I'm going to search for summer press enter and let's do the one here let's see summertime I'm going to take and drag this down again I can control where it begins and ends in my project we'll change the size of it put it over here press my home key to get back to the beginning near the beginning of, of where it's on we'll put it right above our inflatable and then we're going to click on the edit button on the overlay and now we have tracking i'm going to turn off our nag screen here and what do i want to track oh i want to track this guy again and so i click on track and it will do the same thing so it's pretty simple and pretty easy when it comes to titles and videos and images I finished the tracking and we're going to play for you see when we have both the overlay and the image are still on the screen from before. And the overlay works pretty good, especially if it's animated. 
So that makes it look like we're having some fun. The complications come in a couple of cases, especially when you're working with titles. Overlays, videos, images, pretty straightforward. It's more difficult when you're working with a title. Let's look at some of the differences when we're working with motion tracking and titles. So I'm going to go to my title room and I'm going to pick a title that I designed myself, drag it on a higher numbered track, and my title in this case is Make Some Waves Every Weekend. I'm going to move it so it's in the trees, you can see it. And now I'm going to click on the edit button and I can track it except for the fact that tracking is turned off. Why? When you're using motion tracking, you cannot track a title of any kind if it's complex. This happens to have two elements to it. So when I click on the advance button and get into this particular title, we're going to see that I have an element called every weekend and I have another element that says make some waves. So because I have multiple elements and an element might include an, an image, it might include a moving particle, all kinds of things, I cannot apply motion tracking. We'll cancel out of that. Let me give you another example. When we go to our title room and I see lots of cool titles, all of these because they have motion to them, they have particles in them, I cannot use them. Motion graphic titles, I cannot use them. So there are many titles that I can't use because they're complex. Now the colorful titles we can use, plain text titles are easy to use, and some others you'll find that are simple, that are uh, workable. Let's take a colorful one for example. Let's take this uh, warm one, drag it down, and hopefully this should work. Put my playhead above it so I can see it. And we'll change the size of it. And we'll try to motion track and see what happens. So with that highlighted, I'll click on Edit. And I do have tracking, so I'll click on Tracking. And now I see that I could use it. Now let me show you a couple of issues when it comes with this particular kind of element when you're working with titles. I'm going to tie it to the boat. And I'll try to tie it to the blue here. Right there in the middle of the boat. And let's make it longer. And by the way, you can retrack anytime. If you change the duration of your element, you're going to have to retrack. So let's go to the beginning of this and we'll click on track. Let's look at the results of tracking that particular element. I'm going to, uh, I'll turn off the other tracks so they don't get in the way. And when we play this, this is what we see. Now, unfortunately, sometimes when we're using motion tracking, the element is not, it seems stable on the screen, but the motion tracking is very jiggly. So we'd like to show you in the next tutorial some of the things that you can do, especially when it comes to text, that you don't want to wiggle all around the screen when you have this challenge of how do I make text follow something with motion tracking.